Our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Every day, 400 kilometers above our heads, astronauts are living in space. There's Box. Hey, Box. There's Katie. Four, three, two, one. You sit in on top of the rocket, you lay on your back, you have nothing to do anymore for half an hour, and then you think, what am I about to do here? You're going to fly to space. There is no way back for six months. You will be in a tin can with six other people for six months. And there you have half an hour to think about it. The ISS is the frontier outpost of human exploration. And with spacewalks and dockings to contend with, the responsibility is huge. We are still the last line of defense against any malfunctions. Especially when we are really close to the station, the time that it would take for the ground to send a command to the machine in case something goes wrong would be too late. It's a home and a workplace like nothing on Earth. Well, sometimes when you close your eyes and you go to sleep you see a stripe or some flashes and you know, oh, I'm being hit by radioactive particles. Your, your retina is hit. It happens then everywhere in your body. The beauty of a shooting star simply blows my mind. The gateway to space for Europe's future astronauts is here in Cologne, Germany. This is the European Astronaut Center, and all astronauts heading to the ISS have to train here. Among them is recent ESA recruit Luca Parmitano. The Italian is spending six months of 2013 in space. One of his key tasks will be to oversee the docking of the ATV resupply ship to the International Space Station. I'm qualified as the main operator, and when, when ATV uh, arrives on the station, um, what I do, I monitor the distance with, um, uh, with a ruler and making sure that uh, what I see and what the computer thinks he sees uh, are the same. And I also check its rate of motion so that it's not too fast and not too slow. And should something go wrong, I am in the last line of defense where I can send a command to stop, uh, delay, or completely abort the rendezvous. The astronauts are watched closely as they train and then watched as they work. If a European is in space, there's always someone here in Cologne to keep a careful eye on them. We monitor uh, the health status of the astronauts, we monitor the technical systems that maintain uh, the health and well-being of the astronauts on board, and that is done in this room. Astronauts on the International Space Station follow a steady, predefined rhythm of work and rest to make sure they don't get overtired. Spending six months in space, the biggest challenge you have is to be able to pace yourself. Of course, in the beginning, you're very excited. You want to do everything very quickly, but this doesn't work. You can't maintain this rhythm for six months. You have to pace yourself and you have to try to maintain a stable kind of mood, a sta stable type of working rhythm. The work time is approximately 10 hours, um, which is scheduled uh, over the uh, course of the day. They have eight hours of sleep. Um, and the remaining time is two hours of physical fitness and, and, and sport per day. Um, and then there are uh, activities put aside for station maintenance, for unexpected uh, elements, for conferences, etc. The ISS crew's main job is to carry out science research, but they also have to spend a great deal of time maintaining the station. And that means doing some pretty mundane tasks. Vacuum cleaning is not something that you might say is a preferred activity of the astronauts. Nevertheless, if you want to maintain the space station in a good state, if you want to make sure that it's a healthy environment to live in for you, but also for the crewmates that will follow you, every Saturday morning you have to vacuum the, the space station. 
For astronauts, living in space is a beguiling mix of both the familiar and the strange. Water recycling is a big part of the maintenance of the space station, so 70% of the water is recycled and also our urine is recycled. So in the space station we can basically say the coffee we drank yesterday is the same coffee we drink today and is the same coffee that we will drink tomorrow and we also drink the coffee of our crewmates. Sleeping is normally a mattress, it's a blanket, it's a pillow. Uh, in space it's impossible, you would float off, your, blank, uh, your, your blanket would float off, you would float off yourself with the mattress. So uh, that, you cannot sleep like that. And it also doesn't matter where you sleep. Uh, you can sleep on the ceiling if you want, because there's no up and down. So what you see in space is four people sleeping upright, like, like here. Yeah. Uh, two, uh, two of the cosmonauts and two uh, of the astronauts are sleeping upright. One is sleeping on the ceiling and one sleeping uh, uh, on the floor. The crew of the International Space Station act as the hands and eyes of the scientists on the ground, completing their orbital experiments. And the astronauts themselves are part of that experiment, their bodies and minds studied and recorded as we explore how humans adapt to living in space. One of the ongoing experiments on the ISS is called Energy, and Luca Parmitano is one of the subjects, with tests before, during and after his flight. So what we do here is measuring the total energy expenditure of a male astronaut on a long-term space flight on the ground and on the in microgravity. The goal is to optimize the food allotments, for example, for long-term space flights and to better understand what the crew really needs on long-term space flights. But the ground goal is, because it's a basic research, to, for example, understand uh, the principles and the regulation mechanism in obesity, for example. The long-term vision of agencies like ESA and NASA is for astronauts to travel further into space for longer periods of time. For that reason, one of the central themes of research is to understand how our body reacts to living in zero-g. If you take the forces away, if you're weightless, then the body says, well, okay, we don't need the bone anymore, let's break it down. And, and you see it, you see the, the, the calcium, uh, you see going up in the urine, in the, in the faces, you see that you lose your bone. The lack of gravity negatively impacts our muscular system, our skeletal system, um, and that is the big danger that they lose bone mass over time, it's in the order of 1 to 2 percent per month. So after six months you already have lost a significant amount of your bones. Um, and that is certainly a long-term effect. The only hope to maintain muscle and bone is to do exercise, cycling, jogging and weightlifting. The bones of an astronaut who spends six months in space will take six months to recover. The biggest physical challenge is coming back. And uh, of course your body adapts, so you go to space, uh, you, you don't feel too good the first days, uh, you have to adapt to weightlessness. Uh, but coming back is even worse. You have to adapt to the planet, to, the, to, uh, to gravity, so you, get, uh, you become earth sick. problems with, uh, with muscle soreness. For three months I had muscle soreness. So all kind of small muscles that you normally use, you don't use anymore in weightlessness. I mean we do a lot of sports but even, even, uh, even that is not enough for, this, for small muscles. For example your ankles, you know, for balancing. You don't balance anymore. So uh, for three months I had muscle ache. Another occupational hazard of life in orbit is of course space itself and all the highly charged particles of radiation that bombard the ISS. 
Astronauts are of course very well aware of the long-term medical effects that spaceflight can have. Yes, you have a higher level of radiation uh, up there. Typically in a six-month spaceflight, for example, you accumulate about the same type of radiation or level of radiation as a worker in a nuclear factory during his entire career. That kind of radiation exposure could lead to cancers such as leukemia, but for the moment the medical team has yet to find any long-term effects of spaceflight. We continue to monitor the astronauts over a long period of time until their retirement and even beyond. We pool all the astronauts, all the data of worldwide of all astronauts is put into a database and we try to identify specific medical issues uh, that may be related to the occupation of an astronaut. It's an occupation with risks, but also huge rewards. And the view from the window is out of this world. The astronauts are on board now that, that, that are good friends. I was their backup uh, only a few months ago. Uh, they, they just tell me all the time that time flies. And it, it, it's, it is such an incredible experience that uh, six months go by in the blink of an eye, so uh, their biggest concern is to try and make it count for every second and to create memories while they are up there.